Hello, my witches and bitches. As always, I hope your life is only a little off center. Today, in honor of Sawain, we're gonna get a little bit academic. So if you've ever been called a witch or a bitch, you probably know it's not usually complimentary. God forbid, after all, we have any kind of power. Magical or otherwise. If you're familiar with that, perhaps you've wondered, how did a broomstick, well, and a pointy hat, get associated with a negative word used to insult, and in some cases, murder women throughout history? Well, Little Off Center Press has got you. In celebration of Halloween, we are going to address the three major mythoses around the broomstick. Let me take you on a ride. The first historical explanation for the broomstick that I was ever exposed to was in a class called Witchcraft and Heresy in Medieval Europe, or just maybe Europe. And it focused on the concept and the... It wasn't a profession exactly, but the training of an alewife. At a certain points in European history, women were allotted more rights than others. And at certain points, women actually were often very, very skilled brewers. They were making alcohol in the home. It wasn't always true that they were able to have this be a profession, get paid for it or own property. Although at some points, women are actually reported to have owned inns or pubs and breweries. What was noted was that these alewives had a tradition of trying to kind of brand themselves in such a way as to get attention for their products. This included the pony hat, of which we are also familiar, and actually something known as an ale stick. Now, there is some historical debate over whether or not this was actually a broomstick, but they would use, and for the sake of argument and for the sake of Halloween, let's say a broomstick, they would put this outside of their home or their place of business as a sign that there was ale ready for consumption. As you can imagine, perhaps there was a changing of the tides, and as this became a more reputable profession, there was a bit of a tendency for men to want to make it their profession and for alewives to stay in the annals of history as just a little footnote of non-professional housemakers and homemakers. A woman with some chemical knowledge and fermentation knowledge might be viewed with suspicion. So what a convenient way to justify confiscating potential business property owned by women or to just discredit women alewives as professionals in the brewery business and instead turn it into a male-dominated field. But what about the religious significance of the broom. Maybe you are part of a tradition where jumping the broom is something your family does as part of wedding ceremonies. Now, where did this religious tradition come from? It's not just Celtic or Welsh or English or even Roman religious traditions that have emphasis on a broom. The broom actually has importance in the Hindu religion as well. However, Given that we're talking about Sawain, which is a holiday largely connected to the Celtic tradition, we're gonna focus on kind of traditional Celtic importance of the broom. Now, there's a lot of different reports, but essentially the broom was considered a symbol of the delineation of the home and the wilderness. When you swept your doorstep, you were actually creating a protective barrier between, as it were, a more fairy, nefarious, devious wilderness of spirits and troublemakers, and your own home that you are keeping safe. The broom also symbolically is believed to be a balance of male and female forces. You can imagine which part is the more masculine part and which part was attributed the more feminine part. Throughout history, there is a Celtic and perhaps more pagan tradition of the broom being an important religious symbol. In that case, the contested relationship between Christianity attempting to absorb and or discredit pagan traditions as a way of becoming a dominant religion in these cultures may also suggest why we would take something like a broom that was a positive symbol in the pagan tradition and certain patriarchal religious structures might try to discredit it and associate it with the devil and witchcraft. 
I mean, let's get real actually here. You want to talk about something messed up. Women witches by certain religious traditions aren't even having their own magical power. It's from selling their soul to the devil, a traditionally masculine force of evil, that they get their power. So the power isn't even their own. Are we allowed to have anything? The last, and possibly my favorite, of the origin stories for riding the broomstick as an evil witch is a little more psychedelic. So traditionally, a lot of bread making in early colonial American history or in Western European history was done with rye. And there is a fungus called, I'm gonna say this wrong, argot. There's a fungus that grows on rye that actually it has psychedelic properties when prepared in certain ways. This particular fungus was studied as part of early discoveries of LSD. And there was many first-hand reports between 14th and 17th centuries of a certain dancing mania potentially associated with this fungus on rye. And in fact, there is believed to have been an outbreak in Salem, Massachusetts. So, this particular psychedelic fungus was discovered to absorb most safely and powerfully through the skin, particularly the mucosally membranes of our more sensitive bits, such as armpits and the down under. People would create salves of this rye fungus and they would apply it to their skin in order to achieve this dancing mania. There are some first-hand reports that describe it as feeling a lot like flying. Now, it is reported or suggested or thought that some individuals would slather the salve on the end of a broomstick and then rub it on one of those locations where it was known to absorb best, perhaps by riding the broomstick or at the very least appearing like they're riding the broomstick. And this could create a kind of psychedelic fervor that I imagine was very intimidating to watch. Not unlike the brewery story, it's not a hard leap to take women with herbal skills and alchemical skills and the ability to brew and scientifically experiment with this salve based on this fermented rye fungus and accuse them of poisoning customers or friends and loved ones, accuse them of witchcraft, and generally try to discredit their work. So, are any of these stories true? Well, you can certainly do your own research. It could be a combination of all of the above, and it could be none of the above. So whichever story you like best, the story of trying to economically disempower the alewife businesswoman, the religious impact of a beautiful spiritual symbol, or the psychedelic trippy dancing on broomstick salved up fungus. Pick which one you think is a trick. And which one you think is a treat? Happy Halloween. What do you think? I think we know he likes the trippy one. Thank you, everyone. Hopefully you found this a little bit fun. Royal Center Press is a small independent publishing company. We've recently released two books, one of which is called Witches and Bitches by Jennifer Grimm. You're welcome to check that out in the link below. And as a smaller independent publishing company, we are working on creating a kind of hybrid relationship with digital and performance-based mediums, as well as the more traditional writing publications. If you're a performer and you'd be interested in getting involved in one of our digital performance programs for bringing the written word to life, you can check out our website and contact us that way. And if you're a reader or a writer, we are gonna be looking for submissions for the next collection, Cyborgs and Sluts, pretty soon. So keep an eye out for that. As always, have a great day. Be a little witchy. And uh, there's nothing wrong with just being a little off center. Thanks, bye. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. Halloween, 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 Halloween. Halloween. In this town we come home, everybody dance on the pumpkin bomb.